All right, this is another video about the uh, Ohm Tech Polar Engraver laser. And um, this one here, I'm going to do some acrylic night lights. And I just wanted to show you, I'm going to start out first with what not to do. Um, just to give you an idea of some of the problems. Um, first thing I did is I'm doing this one here, and I'm trying to do it with the air assist on just to keep the lens clean. And also, I've got the engraving pattern running in the um, horizontal direction, as you can see. And I'm just going to run through here. And kind of hard to see there, but when you try to use air assist with acrylic, it, it seems to cool the particles that got cut off and push them back down into the existing uh, artwork there so it really doesn't come out good and I'll show you that in a second and but you know with cutting it you always have to use the air assist just to, uh, to cut clean through it and get a good cut on it I, I'll put the settings at the end of the video here what I'm using for all these different things but I just wanted to you know just show you this is the um, the first one that I'm doing and this was done with air assist on and it was done with the, uh, the lines in the horizontal position and you can pretty much see right off the laser there it's pretty crummy it's um, it's all inconsistent depending on uh, how far it was moving and just you can see all the clouding from the the lines disappearing in the um, the melted stuff getting pushed back in and you always flip your artwork and do it on the back side for these lights too I just want to you know tell you and there's a good one that I you know I had done previously that I'm going to compare it to you can see how clear that is and how um, you can barely see the lines but they're going in the vertical direction so here we go I'm doing another one in this one um, you can see um, I've turned the sign sideways and I've got a really nice deep clean engraving. I'll just take and blow that little bit of dust off there in the end with the air hose to really get it cleaned up. And uh, let's see here it comes off the, the laser now. And I've been having really excellent luck with these uh, lenses that I switched over to. I'm still running the same one no problem. And here you can see a little better idea of this one how how nice and sharp and deep the edges are and how it was turned sideways so the lines all run up and down here I got it all weeded out there and um, not sure how much you can see there with the glare of the camera but it's really nice um, the lines are close together but they look like a frosted thing what but yet the? they transmit the light better when you go vertical but I messed it up something happened with the size of it um, and I had to go back and just sand the edge a little bit there. But you can get an idea that, um, you know, it's a much clearer, much sharper image there. And also the, um, the light transmission is better when you run the, the artwork up and down. Uh, let's see, I'll show one that's got a little less at the bottom. This is one I had done previously. And, you know, it's really a good, good clear image. And it's when you put a lot across the bottom there close to the light you can see you'll get the hot spot in the light but you can't really can't avoid that no matter what I tried I just wanted to you know give you some ideas of what and here's the other one I did with the air assist on same setting but it looks like garbage so you know for a quality part you don't want that on now the one thing without not having the air assist on is uh, the nozzle gets plugged up so I've been taking this apart and after each one, just pull it out and do a quick cleaning of the lens and stuff. You can see a little bit of fogging in there. But um, I'm going to eventually upgrade to a two-stage air assist where I have just enough flow to keep the uh, vapors out of the lens for engraving. And I have higher flow for cutting. So you know, that's going to be another project in the future. But for now, I'm probably not going to um, do too many more pro videos about this right at this moment because... I have to get into some gardening video shortly but there you can see just a quick clean up and that's it now on the other side of the shop i've got another project going on some making some walnut bases for my wife and this is how you, you make a uh, 
square hole with a round drill. You just uh, take one of these mortise uh, punches and just punch it out. And there you go. I got square holes. And I'll show you at the end exactly what this project does. But there's that square chisel I showed you months ago. And this has all got to be all glued together and finished. But just give you an idea what's going on over there. So I'm going to take that sunflower pattern that we love and uh, I bought years ago and I'm going to um, do one of them. And again, you'll see that I do have it turned sideways and I do have the image flipped so it's on the back side when you put it in the light. No air assist. And this having this controller has been really nice. Plus having the monitor so I can spin it around and watch what's going on too. And you know, see what happened is really nice too. So that new setup, that computer really works good. I can't believe how fast it is. So I'm just going to run this. And again, you can see I'm getting uh, nice clear burns. They're not really uh, melted down the bottom of the burn. And just a little bit of dust to blow out with the air hose when I'm done. And I'll post the settings a little while. I just wanted to give you an idea of, you know, what works for me. Now, your sitting settings may not be identical because these lasers are all a little bit different in, you know, output power at different levels and stuff like that. And, um, so you have to play with them to get what works for your laser best, I think. You know, don't plan on wasting a sheet of plastic and just doing a bunch of the same part till you hit it good. So there it is. Um, that one's done. Just have to weed it out there. And here it is. I use those tweezers and you know peel the backing off. And if you don't, if you remove this backing before burning, you're going to have a mess. Is all I can say. Um, that extra vapor will, will stick to it and just make a mess. There you can see how sharp and crisp and clear and deep that engraving is. And put that in backwards. And oh no, I did it again. And I found out that I had the rotary turned on. That was messing up my axis there. But anyhow, I'll show you. These are the bases I buy. They're a wide base, and I like to buy them in a box of eight. You get four white, four black, and um, remotes. The remote batteries half the time are dead, so buy extra batteries if you buy them. And they come with a USB cord, so you can use them as a nightlight with a plug. And each one has its own remote. So, you know, they do work out nice. And uh, the remotes are really nice because you can set up all different kinds of patterns and switching colors and phasing in and out and stuff. So, you know, and, and the remotes will work with any of them. They're not keyed to any one. So if you have two in the same room, you have to be careful. But there, I'll give you an idea of, you know, kind of what they look like. A little bit darker there and, you know, just how crisp and clear the, the light is and how nice it transmits um, with the vertical green, I'm going to call it from the engraving. So now I'm going to show you something else I decided to try. I tried, decided to try offset fill to see if I could get a different light pattern in it. And oh my god, that turned into a disaster. I can't believe it. This was the same settings I was using for the, um, you know, just a standard fill. And the offset fill turned out it was concentrating too much heat in one area especially in the fine details and stuff like that where I was trying to circle them all and you can see I wound up with a complete fire where the paper was burning plus the um, actual plastic started you know just disintegrating so I let that run for a couple seconds and I just shut it down um, because it just was a mess but that definitely does not work so I'll never try that again and then uh, you can see that's what happened, same setting, so you'd have to probably work out different settings, but I'm, I'm not going to mess with it. And then after doing that, I wiped down the laser, and I was having trouble with the uh, axis not shutting off when homes. And I had been having some problems before where every once in a while it would do that. So I decided to take it apart, and the lens was still clean. That still looked good. But I found out that um, on the bottom of that arm... Let's see here, I'll show you again. When it goes to home, there's a, there's a bracket that's held on with one screw that trips the switch up underneath there. 
And there it is, the bracket. I pulled it out. The screw was actually loose, and the bracket had twisted when I wiped it, I think. So it wasn't making, um, it wasn't set, setting the switch off before it, uh, you know, before it hit home. So once I got that figured out, and that switch is up under there, this thing is really tight when you're working on stuff, I will tell you that. It's packaged tight, but, um, you know, it's doable to fix it. And once I got that screw up in there and tightened back up, everything was okay again. I think they really should have put two screws on that bracket so it couldn't twist like it did. But anyhow, you know, so if this ever happens to you, it's just probably that um, bracket came loose from the acceleration and deceleration at, you know, the high speeds that it's going at. And I would recommend to set these uh, ball drivers of some type you have to work on this machine because it really is packaged in there tight. So now I'm going to just go through and do one last um, nightlight. And this one's a very uh, thin lines I'm trying to work with, just to give you an idea of how that looks. And um, you can see again, it's still coming out, same settings I used for the other ones. Coming out nice, clear, deep cuts. And just cutting around that bad spot in the plastic. So that one went good. And I think, you know, I think they take about 10 to 15 minutes to do it with the average that I was getting. I'm going pretty slow with it. And another one that pretty much came out perfect, you can see. Really nice deep deep engravings in it. That's what I was looking for. And then to, to get the paper off later, I find that I use tweezers to pull it off. At first I take my finger and just rub the edge of it a little bit to loosen it. Because I found that I could get fine scratches from the points of the tweezers if I didn't do that. And this one, you can see, I turned the rotary off and it came out perfect. And there's the settings that, you know, I'm using for my for all mine. And, you know, it's what I'm, I've settled on now. And they seem to work the best. And this is, you know, what they look like. And these are really great gifts. I mean, you could even sell them if you wanted to. Uh, they are a, a neat item that you can customize. You can put pictures on them and stuff too, but I don't really like the pictures. They just they just don't look right to me. So um, I'm going to stick with artworks and stuff like that. And here's what those stands are for. My wife is actually making some uh, sister dolls and she's uh, we're putting them all up on a stand and they're all going to be a little different now. I'll post a picture when they're all done. And she just got done donating another batch of uh, these little critters to our sheriff's department. I know everybody likes to hear about them. But I just wanted to show you how beautiful a job this does do on the lights once you get the settings down and the direction oriented right and everything. It really, um, you know, it, it's a great little project, uh, especially if you get your kids involved or the grandkids involved. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.